Hello and welcome to Shuru Code. In this video, we are going to talk about another solid principle which stands uh, for I in the acronym. It's interface segregation principle. If this principle has confused you, you are not alone. It has confused me also a lot. But when actually I studied about it and actually I implemented it, uh, I realized that I had been using this principle a lot in my code, but I just didn't know that there is a name. So let's get started. <laughs> In order to implement and utilize the power of abstraction, we actually use interfaces in object-oriented design. It is possible for us to hide all the information or hide all the implementation details behind the interfaces and just give out our interfaces for other classes to implement them or other classes to utilize them. This sounds very uh, intuitive and this sounds very easy to do. But the problem is sometimes we end up designing interfaces in such a way that we make those interfaces really fat and we try to include a lot of functionality or try to hide a lot of functionality behind one interface. This principle targets to address that same problem and it says that you should segregate your interfaces as much as you can. Basically, instead of designing one or two fat and complex interfaces, design multiple smaller interfaces. If you think about it, this is an extension of single responsibility principle that one interface should not be uh, handling a lot of responsibility. Instead, multiple interfaces should be hiding different responsibilities. Let's try to understand this with a real world analogy. This is something that I have observed uh, in the city where I live. Maybe it is a practice in another cities also, but let me try to give this example. There are two different kinds of ATM machines that I have seen here. One are the cash withdrawal machines and another are the cash and check deposit machines. Now, it is possible that single ATM machine gives you the functionality for doing all the three things the, that is uh, cash withdrawal, cash deposit and check deposit. But here I have seen that the cash deposit and the check deposit machine is different and cash withdrawal is different. Now here is the advantage of having these two separate machines. The people who are actually uh, at the bank or at the ATM for withdrawing the cash they will not have the requirement to deposit cash. They might have the requirement to deposit a check, but it would rarely happen that they want to deposit and withdraw the cash at the same time. And hence, the people who want to withdraw the cash have one queue and people who want to deposit cash or deposit check have another queue. So both these people don't have to wait for each other. And hence, uh, multiple people can be served at the same time. This is a uh, tangential example of interface segregation, but that is what the principle is actually also trying to tell you that design your uh, interfaces in such a way so that when the classes which are implementing those interfaces do not have many unused functions. Let's say I design an interface I and it has functions A, B, C, D, E. Now, one class, class one, which is implementing my interface I can implement only three functions. Another class which implements this interface can implement all the five functions. A third class which is using this interface can only implement two functions. Now, these two classes which are not able to implement all these functions or do not actually provide the functionality for all these functions are, sim are just simply uh, sitting around or just simply have to write the signature of those two interfaces. So this is a hint for you to figure out in a code if this principle is violated. If you see an interface which is implemented by different classes and those classes have, has, have not implemented most of the functions or most of the functions do not make sense for those classes that means this principle has been violated now let's try to understand the same thing using a code example so let's say that i have uh, in my application there are various ways i can store some data so i have uh, given an interface called i store now this interface exposes four functions save delete update and fetch Let's say I have a database class which implements this interface. It makes perfect sense for the database class to have these four operations. And so far, everything is good. Now I have a requirement to have a cache store where I have to store the data. But cache store, there are only three functions that can be uh, done. You can add key or add data. You can uh, remove key or delete key. And there is a third operation. You can evict keys. Now let's say I go to my store interface and I add these three functions, add keys, uh, delete keys, evict keys. From the perspective of store interface, it makes sense, okay, you have save, delete, uh, fetch uh, functions and you have different uh, add key, delete key and evict keys fun functions. And now your class, uh, a cache class can actually implement store uh, interface and implement these three functions. But what happens to the rest four functions? 
those also have to be those signatures also would have to be written in the cache class which is implementing store interface and there would be no definition because the cache class is actually not supporting those functions so this makes your store interface fat now tomorrow if there is a third uh, type of storage like say s3 or some another kind of cache storage which has one or two functions extra other than these functions again you are going to uh, bloat your interface add those two functions and you have to change your database class also right in for example in the previous case you have to change your database class also you have to just add the signature of those three uh, add key uh, delete key and evict key function so this itself is a violation of interface segregation principle the better thing to do is you create two interfaces you create a data store interface you create a cache store interface data store interface gives out four functions cache store interface gives out three functions uh, as listed here now there can be another interface which uh, which these two interfaces can actually inherit from or which these two interfaces can implement so basically now we can have two different interfaces one catering to the functions of cache storage and another catering to the functions of database storage this is how you can segregate your interfaces it is also possible that you can inherit uh, interfaces from parent interfaces if there are any common functions let's say if there would have been a common function between the cache and database that could have been in the parent interface and then the cache interface and uh, database uh, and the store interface would have uh, inherited from that that totally depends on the use case but i hope you get the idea just like single responsibility principle where we do not give a lot of work to one single class similarly in the interface segregation principle we try to make our interface less complex and uh, catering to a limited number of functionalities and we try to create more number of interfaces i hope this principle is clear and next time you look at a source code or next time you're designing uh, uh, an object oriented model you can actually uh, look at your interfaces and just by looking at the interfaces and the way the classes are implementing those interfaces you can actually figure out if this principle is being violated or not so that was a brief introduction of interface segregation principle please let me know in comments if the explanation was clear to you if there are any doubts or if any part of explanation was not clear please let us know that as well i have included various links in the description to different books and examples do try those examples and as an exercise again think about parking lot and how you can violate interface segregation principle and what can you do to solve it and share your example and share your solutions uh, with us in comments so that other people can also read and learn from you in the next video we are going to talk about the dependency inversion principle till then take care see you in the next video